Hey, yo, what's up, YouTube, man? It's your boy, Action Jackson, man. So, you guys already know, today is the Super Bowl. Has, you know, obviously, the Super Bowl's been over for about at least 30 minutes to maybe an hour ago, man. But uh just want to congratulate both teams, you know, the Los Angeles Rams and uh, Cincinnati Bengals, man. First off, congratulate the, um, the Cincinnati Bengals, man. It's been a – they have – they have got a, a lot of success, man, this year, man. Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, you know, a lot of playmakers they have on that team that turned around this franchise real quick in less than a year. You know, that's really great for the for the Bengals. And the and the crazy thing about this team is I still think they're really great cap wise. And Joe Burrow still in still under his rookie um, his rookie contract. So is Jamar Chase. I believe T. Higgins is also, yeah, yeah, T. Higgins is. Um, so, I mean, they, a lot of their playmakers that had, like, that made a lot of big plays this year are under a lot of um, rookie contracts. So, basically, what I'm saying is they're definitely going to be back next year. Um, I don't necessarily per se they're going to be in the Super Bowl. I, I definitely think they'll be in the Super Bowl for sure down the line, but I don't know if they're going to go next year. Who knows? They can. Um, of course, they're going to get better, as, as is everyone else in the AFC. So it's going to be really nice to see them. Can you know? All I got to say, basically, is that the Bengals are going to be a really tough team down the line, and they're going to be really hard to play in future games. And once they get that O-line shored up and they fix their secondary, I, I, I really believe you're going to have to watch out for the Bengals, man. Joe Burrow is really special, man. So, um... Yeah, so that's it about the Bengals. But, man, moving on to the Rams, you know, I really feel happy for them, man. Uh, this is really great for them. And um, it just probably, it, it does, it, it sends a message to um, the league, but to the Cowboys also. But I'll talk about the league first, about how you can go, if you know you got the talent to go to the Super Bowl, put your chips in all the way into the table, man. That's what Les Snead and, and everybody in the Rams did over there. You know they put in all they put in all their chips, all first round picks. They said they said forget young future talent. They went out here and got them. They bought they they damn near traded themselves a Super Bowl. And what and you know now you're going to see a whole lot of teams being more aggressive in the market, hopefully. But um, you know them them sending up multiple draft picks to get Jalen Ramsey, the best corner in the league. I I know for sure. Yes, he did get embarrassed tonight, which is crazy because. He, I, me myself, I do credit him as the best corner in the league. He's one of my favorite NFL players. I love watching. I love Jalen Ramsey. I love watching him play. But it's crazy how he got burned a couple times today, and everybody was giving him excuses. But when they, but when it's Trevon Diggs, man, they don't, they clown on him. But it's crazy, you know. So you, you know, we're congratulating the Rams, but you know, basically, I'm just so happy for all the guys. Who got that Super Bowl? But there was a bunch of people I loved on that team, as well as the Bengals. But I really love watching. Uh, really love a lot of the players out on the Rams. You know, like Aaron Donald for sure, Jalen Ramsey, uh, OBJ, Cooper Cup. You know, th those are just to name a few. But you know, you got the other stars also. You got Andrew Whitworth. You got Vaughn Miller. I love watching Vaughn Miller. He got him another ring. This will be his second. Uh, Matt Stafford's first. His first ring ever. You know, Andrew Whitworth finally got a ring. He might retire as well. So, man, it, it this was just a really high-octane game, really. So, if we're talking about... So, now we can transition into the game. You know, transferring into the game, man, it, it was really... It was kind of looking shaky for a little bit for uh, Cincinnati. We obviously knew um, that the Bengals was going to come back, obviously, because of last week what they did against the Chiefs, obviously we knew that they were going to come back. You know, they've been down before in playoff games, so this isn't something new for Joe Burrow and the Bengals. So we knew that they was eventually going to pick it back up. And thankfully, the Bengals' defense was able to keep them in the game because if their defense was below average or about average, I feel like the Rams could have kept putting out points. It would have been really, really, really tough for the Bengals to come back and win. But um, you just look at the start of the game, the first couple of plays looked like the Rams were just... You know, both teams basically started out a bit slow, obviously. But one, but once they got, once they started picking it up, and the nerves kind of chilled a little bit, you saw the Rams pick it up on offense, 
And you see the graphic right here with OBJ, man. OBJ was OBJ looked like if he would have kept staying in that game, you know, that that sucks that he went down with an injury. But it looked like if he kept staying in that game, he might have won Super Bowl MVP instead of uh, Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup really well deserved MVP. But um, you know, obviously, I feel like if o, if OBJ would have stayed in the game healthy, he definitely would have for sure got the Super Bowl MVP, but man, it was starting out really hot, OBJ caught the first touchdown, you know, the Rams were rolling, they were rolling, they were rolling, and then as soon as a OBJ went down with that, um, it, it, I, I know it's a bad knee injury, and the reason why I know it is a bad in, knee injury is because when you see the play, he ran on a, on a drag route, and... um. Matt Stafford threw the ball just a tad bit behind OBJ, and he was trying to, you know, obviously come back and make a play for it, but somehow his knee buckled up, and he went down to the ground, and it, nobody was around him, didn't even touch him. They, you know, it wasn't like he ran into a linebacker, clipped his uh, his knee, or hit, hit, hit his knee to knee with somebody else or something like that. He just ran a simple drag route, and all of a sudden he fell to the ground holding his knee. And we always know in, in any sport, a non-contact injury, is the worst. Those are, those are guaranteed. You're not coming back for the game, and depending on when you hurt yourself for so like for the NFL, so for the NFL, a non contract uh, non contact injury, you're out for the season. Hopefully, Ob uh, definitely OBJ is definitely going to come back for the Rams. Obviously, uh, hopefully he does. So yeah, so basically after you know. Coming back to the game, basically after when OBJ went down, the Rams looked like they look. The Rams looked like they were struggling. They really were because they couldn't get anything on the ground going. And then we all knew that with um, with Cooper Cup, he was their only best target left. So obviously, you stack up the box and you double up Cooper Cup. You know you can slow down the Rams a bit. So when OBJ went down, that's that's when the opportunity. For the Bengals, that's when they picked it up offensively and they went back and they came back and uh, made it a ball game and then eventually took the lead in the game, man. So, um, so I mean, that's, you know, that was really the telltale of the game. Then the Bengals, um, they stalled on a lot of different drives. Not really their fault, but one thing that, that really picked up towards the end of the game was the Rams D line, man. That's when Aaron Donald took over. Von Miller was doing his thing. Leonard Floyd was doing his thing. You know that D line did really, really, really good in that game as well. And you know, eventually the Bengals O line, can, you know, doing what they normally do, they continue. They just ended up folding in the last parts of the game. You really wish they could have held it up for Joe Burrow for a little bit. So that's why he was able, you know, just put up more points. But um, after going all. Overall, that man, this Super Bowl was just really great. It was really, really, really good way to end the uh, 2021 22 NFL uh, season, man. Uh, you obviously, said, looking at this graphic right now, Cooper Cup won MVP. He got it with uh, 97 yards and two touchdowns. He caught the game winner on Eli Apple. Um, <laughs> it's crazy how Eli Apple was talking a lot of mess before the Super Bowl. And everybody's clowning him right now. Everybody from New Orleans, everybody from Kansas City. It's crazy. He's getting he's getting roasted right now on social media. But uh like I said, this was a really good really good game, man. And um just something that just irritates me, not for the Rams, but for the Cowboys perspective, is that this was the game and the biggest game of them all, obviously. Even when OBJ, their second best offensive weapon, was out. The Rams still continued offensively to go to their playmakers. Go to your playmakers, go to your playmakers, go to your playmakers. This was really irate just watching the game because, you know, you just look what everybody else is doing. And it's funny how Dallas doesn't do what other people are doing. And obviously, yes, it's a copycat league, but it's so simple. Give the ball to your playmakers. Give the ball to CeeDee Lamb. Amari Cooper, Tony Pollard, things like things of that nature, man. So, really, I just hope this really sends a message, honestly, to uh, you know Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones to be more aggressive in the market, off you know, being more aggressive in free agency, being more aggressive in the draft, trading up for somebody that you know who can be definite definite game changer, trade up for him, 
You know, who cares if you got to give up that precious sixth round pick? You package that up in a fifth round pick and move up early in the third or second if you can. Things of like that, man. Like, I hope, you know, hopefully the, this will, hopefully this hits home with the Cowboys and a front office and they obviously make some changes. Um, but, you know, they never know. They're billionaire, stubborn people. So, don't know if it'll actually hit home for them. So, we'll see, though. So now, looking at the perspective of the Rams, you know, obviously, Rodney Harrison broke the report that Aaron Donald could possibly retire, which is going to be crazy because I watched Aaron Donald for most of his career um, <clears throat> in the NFL. For sure, I, I you know, I, I don't really watch college football that much. I only watch, like, college football playoffs or towards the end of the college football season. Cause that's when a lot of people start looking at a lot of different prospects, and you can... You know, you watch the Senior Bowl, you watch the playoffs and things like that. You can get a gauge on what some of these players look like and um, what the college football players see them, what they look like in higher pressure situations. But with Aaron Donald, man, I watched him almost his entire NFL career. I seen him in live <clears throat> two times. One in the greatest Monday night game of all time against the Chiefs. That was a high, I think the game ended like 54. Four to fifty one that game, and then obviously I seen him in uh, person when uh, when the Cowboys played him in the divisional round. So basically, like if Aaron Donald retires, man, that's gonna be crazy because he's one of the best defensive players of all time. Definitely the best defensive player I have seen growing up. It's him, Ray Lewis, Ed Reed. You know, I've seen a couple other great guys too. You know, Darrell Revis, things like that. So you know. It's going crazy if he does retire. I mean, he has everything. He has the sacks. He has all the individual accomplishments. This is this is literally all he needed. So if he wants to retire, he can. But I still feel like he has a lot left in him. I still feel like he, he can still play the level he's doing for about another three to four years. Two, maybe. Another two to four years. But definitely, the way I believe in Aaron Donald, the way he prepares and everything like that, I definitely believe he can play for about another three to four years, maybe five but um, if he retires, man, that's the first ballot Hall of Famer. Same goes with Andrew Whitworth. If he retires, that'll be a first ballot Hall of Famer. Eric Weddle already said this was it. I literally joined the team just for this situation and win the Super Bowl. So Eric Weddle is going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. He's going to retire. So obviously the Rams are going to uh, pro- most likely lose. They're definitely going to lose Eric, um, Eric Weddle. I don't know what I don't know what Andrew Woodward's going to do. He contemplated retirement. Don't know. So he might retire. Aaron Donald. I don't think he retires. Uh, if you're asking for my opinion, I don't think he retires. Obviously, he could if he wants to. If he wants to preserve his body and um, live the rest of his life healthy, he don't have to worry about no things hurting him later. And as a you know later when he gets an older age, so. If he wants to retire, he can. He'll still go down as one of the greatest defensive players to ever play. So it is what it is with him, man. So uh, just to wrap up the video, man, just, you know, the Rams, Ram, hopefully, you know, a lot of owners, especially Cowboys, pay attention to what the Rams were doing and being more aggressive, being, being aggressive in free agency in the draft, feeding the ball to your playmakers. I hope they learn that from both sides, the Bengals, the Rams, damn near the entire playoffs, I really hope they paid attention the entire time. Because every single time you watch the playoff game, win, lose, or draw, all everybody, all the playmakers got the ball at least 10 plus times, you know? So, that's it from the Rams' perspective, man. I mean, <clears throat> from the Rams, in a, for the Bengals, man, they're definitely going to be back. Uh, I don't know about Super Bowl. They might. I, I definitely, if they're in it next year, I'm not going to be surprised. But um, depending on what the Chiefs does and if Baltimore change around their offense and if Baltimore can get a, if they can stay healthy and be a f- legit passing game, Ravens can be up there too. Bills, definitely, definitely the Bills. So um, it's going to be looking, it's, it's, I'm, I'm, it's curious about this NFL offseason. This is going to be one of the biggest wonders of the NFL offseason. Because if Aaron Donald retires, Brady officially stays retired, and Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams end up leaving the conference, and if Tampa doesn't find a way to replace a quarterback, this can definitely open up the window for the Cowboys, but I'm not going to 
push over any of the other NFC you know opponents like San Fran, Rams definitely depending on who comes back for them. Things of that nature, man. So uh hope you guys had a nice time watching the Super Bowl. Hope you guys are safe, drive home safe, everything like that. Hope you guys have a nice day. Bye.